Eric Med here. Welcome back to another breakdown. Okay, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to break down these complicated passages, you know, for the MCAT. You know, I like to show you guys that it's not that hard. Okay, the passages, they're a little difficult. Okay, I'll just give you a little difficult, but the questions are very, very straightforward, very easy. Okay, I'm going to show you the guys right now. So, I'm doing a free passage from the Blueprint Company. Okay. You go ahead, make an account, they give you a free whole entire FL. It's cool, put your information in, it's all completely free. Let's go. Um, There's a regular time so you guys can see this live. Okay, ready to begin. All right. Um, try to not pay attention to my voice. Okay, I've been talking so much, I've been tutoring so much today, so my voice is a little beat, but we're just gonna go through it. All right, make sure you guys subscribe. You know, I don't want to be that YouTube head's like, hey man, subscribe. But like, you know what? I'm trying to get monetized out here. Okay, so before I break this down, as always, guys, go ahead, try this on your own. Like, really, really try this. Pay attention to everything here. Try this on your own. See where you messed up on. And you know, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to not mess up. All right, so go ahead, pause it when you need to. I'm gonna scroll down here. Okay, this is question one. Question two, make sure you write your answers like on a piece of paper or something and like how you thought about it. Question three, question four, question five, and that's it. And that is all five questions. Okay, cool. <coughs> all right, we're gonna be breaking this down. Are you ready? Let's go. Take notes of what I say, pay attention because this has helped many, 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 many students. Okay, I constantly get emails and comments on the YouTube channel saying how much this has helped them increase their score. All right, cool. Let's begin. Oral drug delivery systems are limited by the short gastrointestinal transit time, leading to low bioavailability. Okay, remember the first sentence in every passage. I just give you a nice overview of what the heck everything's going to be about. So in my head, boom, drug delivery systems. That's what this is about. Drug delivery systems able to retain the dosage form in the stomach are needed. Okay, research into floating drug delivery systems may satisfy this need. Okay, cool. First paragraph, they're trying to see, hey, how can I get these drug delivery systems? Okay, how can I deliver the dosage of the drug? Okay, let's say it's a 40 milligram drug. How can I keep that 40 milligrams into the patient and make it go into their bloodstream, etc.? Okay, I don't wanna lose any dosage. I wanna retain the dosage. All right, that's what I'm getting from this first paragraph here. And they go, research into floating drug delivery systems may satisfy this need. Makes complete sense. Okay, nothing too crazy here. Research, <laughs> we're encountering a bunch of research passages. This is just another research passage, another day at the job. Okay, this is not hard so far. FDDS can be approached by either effervescent or non-effervescent techniques. Have I ever seen effervescent or non-effervescent? Have I seen these words before when I was studying? No, I did not see them. And that's okay. Okay, that's okay. Ideal effervescent techniques achieve floating duration times greater than 16 hours in the stomach. Okay, I have no, this popped out to me, so I'm gonna highlight this. Okay, you guys highlight, whatever pops out to you, you guys highlight. I'm not gonna tell you, hey, highlight this, this, and that for every single passage, highlight this. No, every passage is different, okay? And I want you guys to generate your own technique. You know, take notes of what I'm doing, all right, and try to get your own technique in there because everybody's different. Okay, so that's ideal effervescent techniques. Okay, greater than 16 hours in the stomach. Effervescent FDDS incorporate gas generating agents which provide buoyancy. Okay, newer research focuses on non effervescent systems where the swelling of polymers joined to the drug and traps air within the polymatrix, polymeric matrix, providing buoyancy to the dosage form. Okay, so we're focused on providing buoyancy to the dosage form here. All right, <clears throat> little, little complicated there. They're starting to introduce some little complications there, but nothing too crazy. They wanna find out how can I retain the dosage form of the drug. Okay, and they say, hey, if I provide buoyancy, maybe that would work. A study was performed on an anti-diabetic sulfonyl urea glipsidide. The drug and one of three polymers were mixed in a mortar according to the ratio described in Table 1. Alright, what the heck is a mortar? I don't know, I'm sure it's some type of 
box or tube or whatever that can mix all these things at once, okay? A drop of water was added, and the mixture was kneaded until a homogeneous paste was obtained. The mixture was then placed in an oven at 50 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to remove water. The compound was then compressed into tablets, which served as a basis for drug release and buoyancy measurements. Okay, big paragraph here, pretty important. What, what, what were they doing? How, how was this research like performed? How did they set up this experiment? Well, here's our drug. We have three polymers, and we want to see, hey, which one of these three polymers is the best to use? That simple. All right, and that's the table here. Okay, whenever you guys see a table or figure, you skip it. Skip it right away. Only when the question asks, you then dissect the information in the table. Okay, you don't want to waste your time doing this. I know you guys have a lot of timing problems with your CP and BB section. Okay, I get that message a lot. All right, let's keep going. The density of glipizide and the three polymers and the drug to polymer ratio in each trial. Cool. To test in vitro drug release of solid dispersions, the tablets were placed into dissolution vessels containing 900 milliliters of 0.1 molar H is HCl. <coughs> Dissolution studies were carried out for one hour, with samples withdrawn at predetermined intervals. Okay, drug concentrations were assayed using HPLC methods. The dissolution experiments were carried out in triplicate, and the results are shown in Figure One. In vitro buoyancy was also tested. All right, the buoyancy was also tested. Tablets were placed in a vessel containing 500 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. <clears throat> the time taken for the tablet to rise to the surface of dissolution media, floating lag time, and total duration that the tablet remained on the surface, total floating time were recorded. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Um, I'm going to highlight this here. This stuck out to me. Okay. Floating lag time, total floating time. Okay. I'm sure this is important. For the drug delivery okay if we float longer does that is that better for drug delivery if we float less is that better for drug delivery if the floating lag time is less is that better if the floating lag time is higher is that better i don't know so i'm going to highlight this that's another factor that they can test in this experiment okay and here's figure one the ksp for glipside cyclodextrin in a chyme solution at 37 degrees was determined to be 5.8 times 10 to negative 4 i'm going to highlight this Real quick, just in case I miss it, okay. KSP, whenever you have KSP, um, K equiv, KA, KB, KW, all right, <clears throat> and they give you the value for it, that should make sense in your head. You should say, hey, does this dissociate strongly? You know, does it strongly dissociate? Does it weakly dissociate? You know, is it easily dissociated? You can tell by the KSP, KQIV, KA, all that stuff. This is a rather low KSP. I mean, I've seen KSPs like 10, negative 10, 10, negative 12, but this is pretty low. So increased solubility of drug dispersion may be achieved by wetting. All right, this makes sense. Okay, I want to increase the solubility because that's a pretty low KSP. So that's one way they could increase the solubility. All right, hydrophilic polymers or by polymer size reduction. All pills for the above trials have the same volume. Hey, just in case I need that. No. Whenever they have a no here, highlight that as well. Because they be low-key trying to make you forget about that. Okay. So, <clears throat> honestly, pretty long passage. Okay. Is this more in-depth, more detailed than AMC? I would say it's about the same level. Maybe a little more in-depth. Okay. little summary about this passage. Okay. You should provide a little summary in your head. All they did was test drug delivery systems. Okay. They want to... The point of this research is so that they can retain the dosage form in the stomach when they deliver drugs. So this is the research here, okay? They tested out this drug, and they said, hey, I'm going to mix it with three different polymers at different ratios. See what the heck happens. And what has happened? This. This is our results. All right. We have trial one, two, and three. Who's the best? Who's the worst? <clears throat> That's basically what this research is about, okay? Thumb it down. Thumb it down. Boom. Drug. Three different polymers. Which polymer is the best? Let's see who wins. Is it Julucery, Beta, Cyclodextrin, or Polyxamer 188? Who wins? Who's the best? How do I know who wins? Who's the best? Look at the figure. Those are my results. Okay, cool. 
Question. Which of the following correctly lists the floating lag times for the three trials in increasing order? Okay. No, assume that the mixing of the drug and polymer does not change the density of either component. <clears throat> okay, cool. Floating lag times. Um, they mentioned in the passage right here. Okay, the time taken for the tablet to rise to the surface of a dissolution media. Floating lag time. So how long does it take to rise to the surface? Well, okay, they give us the trials here. Yeah, trial 1, trial 2, trial 3. I believe trial 3 is for the third one, right? Okay, yeah. So trial 3 is this one. This is trial 2. This is trial 1. Oh, here's the densities. Okay. Now, tell me this, guys. All right. They want to know the floating lag time. How long does it take to float to the surface? What's going to take longer to float to a surface? Something lighter or something heavier? What do you think? Something more dense or something less dense? <laughs> You're right, okay. The one that's less dense will float the quickest. The one that's the most dense will float the will take the longest time to float. Okay. Simple. Density sinks to the bottom. If something is dense, it's gonna sink to the bottom. What about buoyancy? Well, okay, if something is heavier, something is more dense, it's gonna take a longer time to float. If something is less dense, it's gonna take a quicker time to float. So, what's the lightest here? This one. This one's pretty light. This one's heavier. This one's the heaviest. Least dense, more dense, most dense. Okay. The one that's the least dense will take a sh shorter amount of time to float. So the most dense will take a longer time to float. Three, and then two, and then one. Three, two, one. <clears throat> cool. Tolazemide is an aromatic drug with a similar sulfonyl urea structure to glyps iodide. Which of the following is most likely tolazemide? Okay. <laughs> Pretty fucking easy, guys. It's like a lollipop question here. Tolazemide is an aromatic drug. Cool. Aromatic. Amide. <clears throat> well, this one's not aromatic. Okay, aromatic has to have conjugation, which is double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. Okay, amide. I'm looking for an amide group. Is there an amide here? Yes, but it's not aromatic, so I'm going to uh, get rid of D. Is there an amide? No, there's no amide here. Okay. Is there an amide? Yes, there is an amide. There is an amide right here. Okay, is it aromatic? Yes, it's aromatic. Do we have an amide here? Yes, we do have an amide right there. But this is two. There's an amide here. And if you look at this one, it's also an amide. And here's aromatic. So let's compare these two. All right. It's similar to sulfonyl urea. Okay. Urea, I know, has an ammonia group to it. I know it's going to have like some type of nitrogen on there. Okay, I remember that from content review. So, this one has an additional nitrogen. Okay, this one doesn't. So, I'm going to go with this one here. Okay, I remember urea. Let's see urea. I know it has like some type of NH in there. <coughs> Let's go right here. NH2, NH2, and carbonyl. So I'm going to go with this one. All right. This one doesn't have enough nitrogens. Easy. Fucking easy, guys. What the hell? I thought this was hard. I thought the MCAT was hard. <laughs> this is easy, man. I'm <coughs> sorry. My voice is like hurting. Okay. A student preparing for the experiments inadvertently adds an additional 400 milliliters of the same acid solution to the dissolution vessel. What will be the new pOH of the solution? Hey, don't get tricked here. pOH. Remember, they're talking about... Um, hydrochloric acid, I believe it was 0.1. Let me see right here. They didn't ask you for the pH, that's for the pOH. So don't get tripped up on that. All right. They add an additional 400 milliliters of the same acid solution. Okay. Here's 900 milliliters of 0.1 in the dissolution. That pOH of this, okay, is going to be 13. How? Well, you find the pH, okay, pH is equal to negative log H+. All right, you do know that. 
And the H plus is the concentration of acid. We have 0.1 molar concentration of acid. So then you put that, plug that in, you get a pH of one, but the pOH is 14 minus that one. It's gonna be 13. Okay, you can comment down below if you need me to like put the drawing in or my work on a piece of paper or anything like that. Okay, if you don't get that, just comment down below. I'll, I'll make sure you get it. So pOH is 13 here. They're looking for the new pOH after we add this. So we add 400 milliliters of the same solution. <clears throat> wow, another tricky, another thing to try and trick here, another trap here. Okay, you're just adding more 0.1 molar HCl. You're not changing the concentration of this. You're just adding more molar, not molar, molarity. You're just adding the same amount. Okay, you have 900 milliliters and you can have 1300 milliliters of the same concentration, okay? The concentration is not changing. They're just adding more of it. When they change the concentration, okay, then they change the pH. But they're not changing the pH here. They're not changing the concentration. So it's gonna be 13 still, all right? Notice how confident I am in my answer choices, okay? This is easy, this is easy, okay? <clears throat> the flow rate of stomach content, I'm sure you went, oh, for this one. Okay. Comment down below if you're like, oh, whoops, <laughs> that's funny, okay. The flow rate of stomach content emptying is 100 centimeters cubed per second. Patients who undergo gastric bypass surgery will increase this rate to almost 1600 centimeters cubed per second. Assuming the flow of stomach contents approximates Pasuli's law, ooh, that's pretty low yield. What change to their gastrointestinal connection would explain this? provided no other changes occur in the conditions of stomach content flow. Pusuli's law, who knows it? Q equal pi radius to the fourth times the change in pressure over eight. And then you have like this letter, um, eta, which is viscosity times L, which is the length. Okay, we went from 100 to 1600. So we multiplied it by a factor of 16, <clears throat> okay. The radius is R4. Let me see. Can I annotate on this? Oh, cool. Okay, hold on. I'm going to share my iPad here so you guys can just see this. If you understand what I'm talking about, then you can go ahead and just fast forward a little bit. But I'll do the math here on my iPad right now. Okay. Let's see. All right, <clears throat> Basuli's law, Q equal pi radius to the fourth times the change in pressure all over eight eta, which is viscosity times the length. Okay, we went from 100 to 1600. So how do we do that? Well, this guy here, the radius. Since it's on the top of the fraction, when we increase the radius, it's gonna increase the flow. So radius, if we increase it by a factor of four, not back there for say we multiply it two okay we increase the radius by two to the fourth it's going to be two times two times two times two four times two is eight eight times two is 16 16 116 we increase the radius by a factor of two when we increase the radius by a factor of two it goes up by a factor of 16. okay that's what that to the fourth power does Simple, easy. Okay, let's keep going. So, uh, the radius is two times larger. Okay, it's not the, uh, it's not longer. Okay, that, that would indicate the, the L on the bottom of the equation. Was that hard? Hell no. <coughs> All right, let's keep going. I'm sure you guys can see now how easy these questions are. All right. I just wanted to let you guys know that it's way easier than you think. All right, it gets a, so MCAT is a big bark, but no bite. It's a dog with a big bark, but no bite. Okay, and these are straightforward. This is a little complicated, this is straightforward. All right, when in vivo studies were performed on the three drug polymer combinations, it was found patients in the poly 188 group experienced the most stomach pains after administration. Given the results of the study, this is most likely due to, all right, <clears throat> Let's see. Why did these, why did this guy give stomach pain and these didn't? Okay, well, what's different about this 
from these two is that it's less dense. Okay. Elevated drug concentration causing inflammation of the gastric mucosa. Like I said, what's different about this from these two is that it's less dense. There's nothing saying about the drug concentration. Okay. That sounds right, but it is wrong. Sounds right, but it's wrong. Don't click the one that sounds right all the time. Okay. That's just to trick you. All right. If there's no like solid evidence for this, then you don't pick it. Tablet fragments causing inflammation of the gastric mucosa. Okay, maybe. Maybe. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Okay. Glypsidide slash poly X and Mer1A matrices being the smallest of the three tested. Interesting. Okay, wow, this is a harder question. Let's see now. And increase pH of the stomach contents. Well, that's wrong. We can eliminate that one. Eliminate what's bullshit. Okay, chop those answers out. I'm left with two now. This is good. It's a good question, okay? I like questions that make me think about it a little bit. All right. This is good here. All right, this is obviously wrong. You're not going to change the pH of the stomach. What does that have to do with anything? Now, being the smallest of the three tested, table fragments causing inflammation of the gut of strict mucosa. Oh, okay. So we're experiencing stomach pains. <clears throat> All right, we're experiencing stomach pains. Just because something is small, does that mean that it's going to make stomach pain? If we have fragments, is that going to cause stomach pain? Okay, notice how I dumbed this down, guys. Okay, two answer choices. Rather difficult question here. Make a connection. Okay, make a connection. Table fragments, does that cause pain? Matrices of this being small, does that cause pain? Well, I think table fragments are more likely to cause pain. Okay, if it causes inflammation, inflammation is pain. Okay, inflammation leads to pain. All right, you're compressing those nerve cells, ne neurons, okay? Inflammation is usually associated with pain, okay? And this I wouldn't associate with this pain. How can having a matrices that's small equal pain, table fragments causing inflammation that it could possibly trigger pain? So I'm gonna go with B in that one, okay? And I'm sure there's a better Explanation for this. I'm gonna check my. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna check the answers for this right now. Okay, you can skip this if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead. Remember, I like to do this all live for you guys. Okay, let's keep going. End section. Start next section. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and see if this is right. <coughs> Fuck. All right, let's just continue, continue, continue. Bam, end this section. Oh God, okay, last one, Psych Soch. Guys, for Psych Soch, it's just stream memorization. Okay, don't don't think it's too hard. Get that 300 page doc and study Psych Soch. All right, make some Anki on that. All you gotta do for Psych Soch. If you read the Kaplan Psych Soch book, that's, that's not gonna get you so far. Okay, let's see what happened here. All right, one eighty teens. How can I five correct? We did five, right? Yeah. How can I check the answer choices? What the fuck? Um, okay, can I see? All right, let's see. If you want the on why it's right or wrong, here it is, guys. You can read it. Okay, we got this right. This right. Bam, this right as well. This right. This one so fucking easy. And this one right as well. Okay, we got all of them right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. This is why this is wrong. All right. That's it for this, guys. Drop a, drop a subscribe. Okay, help the channel a lot. If you want to help the channel a lot, you can just subscribe. Okay, we're trying to hit a thousand, get a little monetization going. I'm not even sure how much I'm going to get monetized. I curse so fucking much in this fucking channel. But anyways... 
Comment down below. If you want more, comment down below. Be like, Eric, this is good. Let's do another one. If you have a recommendation, do that as well. Recommendation for a video, and I'll do it for you guys. I want you guys to succeed on the MCAT. See you guys in the next video. Peace.